Hello everyone, we are the next team to present our end of course assignment uh, for the subject ethics. Uh, my team is conformed by Leslie, Marcela Alvarado Garcia, Alejandro Limón Valdez, Gloria Maria Samudio Mendoza, and Karime Yamilet Martinez Mora. Uh, we're going to talk about the dilemmas of beliefs and values. And my partner Leslie is the first one to start. Hi everyone, my name is Leslie and I'm going to talk about politics. And to begin with, it's a quote, to be involved in TESOL anywhere is to be involved in issues of liberation and domination everywhere, Julian H. And as we know, TESOL stands for teaching English to speakers of other languages. Now, how do teachers reconcile this fact with the positive values that we carry as ELT as well? ELT professionals. Well, most of teachers are compromised to achieve the goals of introducing and teaching their students the language successfully. They have to be dedicated and responsible with the kind of knowledge and information they give because there are certain subjects that a teacher should never touch because of many beliefs of people have. Now, what do I personally do to enhance my image as a professional either in my own eyes or those of others? Well, uh, in a personal experience, while I was working as an auxiliary teacher before the pandemic, well, I worked with little children for, from four to six years old, and I had to be critical and careful with the way I spoke to them. Because since, since they were really young, they were easily distracted, and I had to be creative in order to maintain their attention. Now, what values uh, underlie my attitudes to professionalism? I think that some, I think that to be somebody's role model in, is one of the best compliments uh, someone can give you. When I start teaching, I will make sure to be partial with all my students, responsible, respectful, and ethical, and to respect everyone's beliefs. Now, speaking of personal faith and beliefs, now my partner Alejandra is going to talk about the next subject. Hi, uh, I'm Alejandra, and I will be talking to you about personal faith. The first thing, should teachers and students' religious and spiritual beliefs directly or indirectly influence their work in the in language classroom? Now, based on Unit 5, Task 5, what is a, a professional code of ethics, a professional teacher has to separate their religious beliefs from their professional life. Since most of the time students have their own religious beliefs, it will depend on how these beliefs might be reflected in the way students learn. In case a student's beliefs can compromise the learning process, the teacher should talk to the parents about it. Until a certain point, a teacher has the right to share some values that might be important to them and might be helpful to the classroom space and classroom environment. Now, finding out about finding out from learners and learners about the learning background of learners. This is a must. Knowing the student's background is quite useful for the teacher, since all students and students' reasons and motivations vary from student to student. As a teacher, you have to be familiarized with their background. Finding out about the linguistic strengths and weaknesses of the learners is also a must. On Unit 7, Task 3, the learners first, and Unit 7, Task 4, learner profile, explains that knowing their strengths and weaknesses is it, helpful for the teacher because like that, they will know what specific areas the students need to work on and in which ones they are already good at it and just need to improve them a bit. Now, the purpose of using different materials in a classroom is quite helpful. Since using different varieties can help them as a support teacher during the lesson, and it would, it would help the students to understand the topic of that particular day. Also, working in group or pairs helps them improve different skills by sharing ideas with others. Since most of these materials end up being useful for the teacher, it would be really probable that they will use them again in different lessons. Now, since we talked about values in the beginning, my partner, Gloria, will continue with that. Well, 
Uh, thank you, Alejandra. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Gloria, and I'm going to talk about the value of tolerance when teaching. Well, firstly, let's remember that EFL teachers must be mentors filled with values that will help guide our students. Uh, these values must be present in our personal and also professional code of ethics, uh, which we should stick to and also bring to the classroom. This code uh, will provide us with guidelines for the professional behavior uh, and also the professional standards that we as teachers must follow when teaching. Now, tolerance uh, remains one of the biggest values that should be projected onto our learners. The importance of tolerance is because without it, we wouldn't be able to create a healthy and cooperative environment well, where all students feel safe and comfortable. As teachers, we should be the bigger person, right? Uh, therefore, when facing intolerance in the classroom, we must not ignore or encourage this behavior. Instead, I think that we should take a more calm approach to it and try to create a bond between our learners. So that way, the tolerance comes in naturally and it's not forced by us. Um, this is where more values come in place. Um, values like patience and optimism will help us uh, when responding to intolerance. Moreover, the question remains, how do we create tolerance? Well, tolerance can be achieved by interacting with our students during the whole learning process. This means before, during, and after the class. And always remember that students are humans and they're all different. So make sure that they know you genuinely care about them. You can ask them about their favorite food, their favorite hobbies, their favorite movies. And even though this seems like simple information, it is extremely important for teachers to know this about their students. This is because uh, by doing this, we will create trust not only between the teacher and the student, but also between the student and the rest of the classmates. In addition to this, um, we must also embrace other values like commitment, respect, and kindness in class. Um, activities like involving students in the class and teamwork will help them nourish their collaboration skills. Finally, as their tutors, we should remain focused on them during the whole lesson and make sure that you pay attention to their reactions and their struggles. Ask them about their doubts and make them feel comfortable enough to express them, as well as um, respecting boundaries and remaining professional at all times. Now, uh, speaking of professionalism, my partner Yamilev is going to talk more about it in the last section of this presentation. Um, I will leave you guys with this quote by Helen Keller, which says, the highest result of education is stolen. Yamilev, you can go ahead. Thank you, Gloria. Hello, everyone. I am Yamilet Martinez, and last but not least, we are going to talk about professionalism. First of all, let us remember that professionalism is a skill and polite behavior that is expected from a person who is trained to do a job well, in this case, teaching. So based on this and taking into account the anomalies and the harsh realities of the ELT in Mexico, I believe that teachers are only able to reconcile professional identity mainly through values because they can be teachers with great qualities, even with previous training, but if the values are not included, nothing works. So this can help to define the traits, the traits, sorry, and characteristics of the teacher to create their own identity a teaching style and a way of being. And followed by this is the teaching cognition. That is to say how teachers' experiences, beliefs, thoughts, and thinking processes shape their understanding. And to contribute to the above, there is teacher development. It is important to recognize that this is an evolving learning process 
and this learning process is continuous and endless. Even if a teacher has achieved some development, they still need to learn from along with their entire life and career. And to be honest, in this rapidly changing world, the preparation of skilled teachers is essential, and we all know that. The famous argument of the teacher education, like teaching itself, is deeply rooted in values. It's true. Educating in values is essential for the simple fact that it allows us to be people with appropriate behaviors, to have a notion of what is, what is good and what is not, to know how to make decisions in the future, be responsible. That is why we must always give the best of ourselves in our work. And according to my experience, the values that are most evident in teaching and those that I have taken the most up to now are tolerance, respect, responsibility, and enthusiasm. And finally, one advice I will give to teacher educators at this point to always be passionate and to be proud of what you do or what you are able to do. Never give up despite the adversities of the future. This is one of the most beautiful professions and we must take them most off. Thank you. Well, that's it for our presentation. Um, we hope that this, uh, this presentation was useful. And the last quote that we want to say is, great teachers share more than facts. They share values. Thank you.